Welcome in, Winning Cures to Everything. It is the Thursday, December 1st edition of the show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. And we have got some games to go through. We're going to give analysis on the conference championship games today. Before we begin, I do want to tell you that the show is brought to you by BetUS. It is America's premier online sportsbook, America's favorite online sportsbook since 1994. They got fast payouts, they got incredible customer service, and if you click the link in the description, you will get a $50 free play without even having to make a deposit if you go ahead and get signed up over at BetUS. That's right, you can try it out. You don't even have to actually deposit money. You can try it and get a free 50 bucks over there to gamble with. So go ahead and take advantage of that deal right there. Bet US, it is where the game begins. Also, I host the college football show over at Bet US TV. I would highly recommend that you go and watch this week's episodes. We did shows on Tuesday and Wednesday. Of course, today is Thursday. I recommend that you go and check those out. I give out my best bets over there. I basically tell you in these games which way I'm leaning. I show you what the numbers say, and then I tell you which direction I'm going. That's the way to go about it, right? That's the easiest way to do it. So I would recommend that you go over there and check those out. They, uh, I, I've, I feel really good about our show. I'll just say that. I feel great about our show. Uh, this is the conference championship edition of the show. So let me go ahead and tell you, uh, first off, if you're watching the show, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure that you like this video. It's a little thumbs up button that you'll see down there. It kind of looks like this right here, uh, but make sure that you are subscribed and that you like the video. That helps us out on the back end, right? All the smart people algorithmic stuff uh, that actually helps us grow on this YouTube feed. Uh, I would certainly appreciate it. Certainly, certainly appreciate it. Uh, again, this is the conference championship edition of the show. And, yeah, season record thus far when doing this segment, 79 and 75. So not great, uh, but for the most part, all year I've been giving you at the under-the-radar games, the games that we had not discussed on the BetUS show. Over at BetUS, uh, I am nine games above 500, so I am profitable thus far on the season. Things are going well over there. I uh, would like to get back into a much more winning way than I have been lately, but, uh, but yeah, that my best bets will be over there. Went eight and four last week on the picks here. So why not go ahead and dive in? Let's go ahead and do this thing. First game of the weekend will be Akron at Buffalo. It's a noon Eastern time kick on Friday. Weird time, but it's a makeup game. And yeah, I will tell you, uh, I am a I am a fan of them actually playing this game. Buffalo needs it in order to get to a bowl game. This is a big, big spot. Let's go on and pull it up on the screen here so that you can see what we're looking at. Over the last five, all of these stats, by the way, are over the last five weeks. If we're going to break this thing down, let's go on and start with Akron's defense, which has actually been really, really good over the past five weeks. They are number five in the country in PPA uh, defense per drive. So, I, I mean, their defense has been really, really good. And Buffalo has just completely fallen apart. They had a chance the last three weeks to get bowl eligible and lost all three times. They had an opportunity and didn't take advantage of it. And a lot of it is because of their offense, but the majority is because of their defense. Their offense is number 99 in PPA per pass. Akron is number 42 in that metric on defense. Uh, Buffalo is number 90 in PPA per rush. And Akron is number one in PPA per rush over the last five weeks. And teams are actually running on Akron a lot. 55% of the time, Akron is having to defend the run, and it'll be no different here. Buffalo is running the ball over 51% of the time, uh, so not throwing the ball a whole lot. Don't trust the quarterbacks a whole lot. You look at this Akron defense, they're only giving up 2.5 scoring opportunities per game. That is um, that is uh, number four in the country, but it's only 2.5 trips inside their 40-yard line, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, points per scoring opportunity, Akron is number seven, and when you look at what Buffalo is doing, they're just not being able to finish drives at all. Uh, they are, uh, let's see, number 79 in points per scoring opportunity, uh, number 96 in scoring opportunities per game. So this uh, this certainly self, uh, sets up well for Akron on that side of the ball. As far as offense is concerned, yeah, and this is this is what we're looking at, okay? Um, Akron number 33, PPA per pass, Well, Buffalo's defense is number 27. Akron number 108 in PPA per rush. Well, Buffalo's number 122. So, Buffalo defends well what it is that Akron does, 
Uh, the issue is that Akron, as far as success rate goes, yeah, they may not score a whole lot when they're passing the ball, uh, which certainly would hurt your PPA. That's predicted points added. But you look at what they're doing as far as a passing success rate is concerned, uh, they are number seven in the country. 44.44% of their passes are successful, uh, which means either getting first downs, uh, et cetera, right? There's uh, getting more, how about this, getting uh, 50% on first down, 70% of the needed yards for a first down on second uh, third down it is either converting or fourth down converting. It, they're they're really good throwing the football. And that's because they've got a new quarterback in there. And the new quarterback is pretty good. Uh, Buffalo, you know, number 23 in penalties per game compared to Akron number 98. That's certainly something to pay attention to, along with turnover margin. Uh, look, Akron is number 126 in giveaways per game on the season. Uh, they are, excuse me, Buffalo is number five in takeaways per game. So that is something to pay attention to. Although, I, the majority of those turnovers were done when DJ Irons was the quarterback, and Jeff Undercuffler looks like he does not turn the ball over as much. Uh, this team has developed really, really well under Joe Moorhead. Uh, the number says Buffalo minus one, or roundabout. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. Um, I know that this is a double-digit spread, but, uh, but give, me, give me Akron plus the 11 here. Uh, Buffalo is favored by 11, total is 55. I, I might would go the under, and I would probably, yeah, I'll take that back. I, I might would lean the over on this. But um, but give me Akron, plus the 11. I like the zips. I like Joe Moorhead. I like what they're doing. All right, moving along, we have got the Conference USA title game with North Texas heading to UTSA. That's right, the Roadrunners meet meep at home, an 8.5-point favorite total sits at 70. On this, it's Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS Sports Network. It's in the Alamo Dome, and, uh, and that place is going to be absolutely rocking. Uh, they, they won Conference USA last year. Uh, they're hoping to do the exact same as they head into the AAC. And number for me says UTSA by 16 over the last five weeks. This North Texas defense has been absolute trash. Uh, they are number 106 in PPA per drive on defense. UTSA on offense is number 12 in that metric over the last five weeks. Uh, the UTSA defense has not been great either, to be completely honest. And a lot of that has to do, the reason why their number is number 52, PPA per drive on defense, is because uh, they have played some pretty weak competition, uh, just to be completely honest. But we're going to look at what the numbers say, right? Um, North Texas is number 29, PPA per drive on offense. They can sling it. They can throw the football quite a bit. They are number three in passing success rate over the last five weeks. UTSA's defense is number 110. It's something to pay attention to. Uh, passing downs PPA whenever North Texas gets behind the chains. Austin Oni can absolutely fling it. And there is a bit of a problem with that UTSA secondary. They are number 91 um, as far as passing downs PPA, right? Uh, they are number 88 passing down success rate is UTSA's defense. And passing down success, North Texas is number three. So North Texas will be able to move the football on these guys quite a bit, I would imagine. Um, the issue that I think that North Texas is going to run into is UTSA is number 13 in half a great, and U uh, North Texas is number 76 in half a great allowed. So if they let uh, UTSA just come after the quarterback all the time, Austin Oni is not going to have a ton of time to be able to get rid of the football. And if that happens, uh, you look at this turnover margin, Austin Oni, number 81 in giveaways per game this year. Uh, definitely not great. Uh, on the other side, UTSA is number 25 in giveaways per game. So, yeah, they don't really turn the ball over. They don't hurt themselves. Um, it just, it just really don't. Just really don't. North Texas on defense is number 97 in PPA per pass. UTSA is number one over the last five weeks. Uh, you look at rushing like, if, if North Texas says, okay, well, we are going to play uh, eight men back and we are just going to make you try and beat us through the air or whatever, or make you try and beat us by running the football, UTSA number 44, PPA per rush, number 20 in rushing explosiveness. Uh, North Texas is number 110 in PPA per rush allowed. Uh, they are number 43 in rushing explosiveness. Y you're not going to be able to make a whole lot of stops here. Standard downs PPA. So first and second down when you're ahead of the chains, et cetera. UTSA is number three in standard downs PPA. Uh, they are number 38 in standard down success. North Texas, number 117 and number 97, uh, respectively, right? This is, 
This is not a great North Texas defense. I know that this game was 31-27 to just a few weeks ago, but that was a weird script in that game. Things went a little sideways early in that one. I don't expect them to this time. I think that UTSA is going to come out rolling. Give me the Roadrunners and Coach Jeff Trailer. That quarterback, Frank Harris, is going to have a day, I would imagine. Uh, I think UTSA absolutely rolls them. I think they beat them by double digits here. Um, and maybe it's the last Seth Luttrell game at North Texas. We keep hearing rumors. Uh, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening with that one. All right, moving along. USC and Utah play in the Pac-12 title game, and this is a sold-out game at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Uh, it's 8 p.m. Eastern time on Fox. I got to tell you, the total here, 67 points. I mean, this thing got in the 80s. The last time it was forty-three to forty-two when these two met uh, just earlier this season. USC is a three-point favorite here, and let's go ahead and pull it up on your screen so that you can see what we're looking at here. This is the stats over the last five weeks. Okay, now I understand Utah's strength of schedule a little bit different than what USC has been dealing with, but what I'm looking at is this defense uh, PPA per drive for USC number 121 in the country. At Notre Dame had not been able to throw the football on anybody, and they were able to do whatever they wanted to on USC. Now, part of the problem that Notre Dame had was the fact that they had a bunch of guys in the back seven on defense that ended up being injured, and they had to put up freshmen against some of those uh, ridiculous wide receivers. I think Utah is going to be able to uh, match up uh, from a cornerback perspective much better against those wide receivers so, Caleb Williams is still going to have to make things happen, and I'm sure that he will. Uh, but here's, here's what we've got. Uh, Utah is number 17 in PPA margin, and USC number 26. So, again, USC number one in PPA per drive on offense. Well, Utah's defense is number 19. They have started to develop significantly better than they were at the beginning of the season. This is a, a pretty young defense. They are trying to fit the pieces in uh, the best they can. Look at this PPA per pass on defense for Utah. Number 17 PPA per pass. Uh, USC is number three on offense. Uh, passing success rate, USC number 13. Utah's defense is number eight. Like, and, and the ridiculous thing about this is the fact that Utah is defending uh, over 63% passes. Whenever they are on the field, people are throwing the ball 63% of the time. And a lot of the times it's because they are behind and they're trying to get caught up, right? But even still, that is a ridiculous number for them to be as good as they have been. Have it great allowed. Uh, USC's offense number two, so that offensive line doing really, really good things. Uh, but Utah number 15. So if there's any kind of a breakdown in assignment for USC, uh, they're not going to be able to stop Utah from getting back there. Like passing downs, PPA, et cetera. Like this is all, this is all stuff that Utah is going to be able to match up with pretty, pretty well. Um, coming over to the other side of the ball, though, hey, you see all this red. Like, green is good, red is bad here. Um, USC's defense, number 114 PPA per pass allowed. Uh, Utah's offense, only number 96 right now, but they're number 42 in passing success rate. You look at the rushing. I mean, it is just mind-blowing to look at this. Um, number 115 PPA per rush is USC, and as far as PPA per rush allowed. Uh, Utah is number 9 on offense. They are number five in rushing success rate on offense is Utah. Uh, rushing success rate allowed for USC's defense, number 128. Uh, the, the biggest thing here to me is USC is still number one in the country in turnover margin. They are plus 1.8 per game. They don't give the ball away, and they are number three in the country in takeaways. Like, that is absolutely mind-blowing. And Like, if you really pay attention to what they're doing, uh, it is crazy. But on the other side, Utah, number 18 in takeaways per game, and they are only number 44 in giveaways per game. So they don't turn it over all that much. They're number 27 in turnover margin. Uh, this is not a huge discrepancy here. I mean, you start looking at things like net points per drive, well, USC is number 8 and Utah is number 9. Uh, you start looking at points per play margin, USC is number 9, and Utah is number 14. Like, it, this is... 
this sets up really, really well for a possible upset here, especially considering that Utah has already beaten them. Yes, it was at home. Yes, it was an emotionally charged environment, as I believe Boo Corrigan said on one of those CFP shows. But look, sometimes the truth is just this. Uh, Utah is a really good football team. So anything is possible in this game. I'm going to take Utah plus the three if you're giving me that. Uh, I know that my number says that USC is favored by one and a half. Well, yeah, that's that makes sense. That's within the number. So it, it's, on, it's sitting on a key number here. Caleb Williams is absolutely ridiculous. I understand that. But I think that Cam Rising is too. Uh, I think anything could happen in this game. Might as well give me Utah here. So I, I will take the Utes plus the three on that one. All right. Moving along, Toledo and Ohio. That's right, the MAC championship game, Toledo, a one-and-a-half point favorite. Total sits at 55. This one is on Saturday. This is our first Saturday game here, 12 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. And, hey, let's go on and bring it up. Uh, we got two quarterbacks that are out here, so I don't even know what these numbers are going to be worth. Uh, if you just look based on the last five weeks, Ohio would actually be favored. Uh we don't know if Daquan Finn is going to play for Toledo. We don't uh, – how about this? We do know that Curtis Rourke is not going to play. They announced that he is out for the season. So if he were to come back, I mean, that would just be absolutely ridiculous. But either way, uh, you look at strength of record, you look at PPA margin, you look at uh, offensive and defensive success rate, everything, it just kind of points towards Ohio here. But you look at Toledo's defensive success rate allowed. You look at their uh, defensive PPA per drive at number eight – in PPA per drive on defense is Toledo. Number one in defensive success rate allowed. Ohio could have some problems, right? And and the backup quarterback did really good things other than the fact that when they were playing against Bowling Green, they had the least yards per play that they've had in any game since the Ohio, excuse me, the Iowa State game earlier this year. Like their yards per play were not great in that spot. But... Uh, the thing that does maybe make you feel pretty good is the fact that uh, this, you know, this Toledo offense is not great, uh, especially running the football. Ohio is not going to let them do anything running the ball. Ohio is number five PPA per rush. They are number uh, number one in rushing success rate allowed, number eight in offensive line yards allowed. And then you look uh, as far as passing the ball, uh, they're number 62 in PPA per pass, with Toledo is number 74 but Toledo was only number 116 in passing success rate on offense. Like, Havoc rate allowed, Ohio's defense can get after the quarterback. They're number 14 in Havoc rate, and Toledo number 103 in Havoc rate allowed. And so, it's something to pay attention to with that, uh, because that offensive line just does not appear to be able to block. And if Ohio can send some of those rushers, uh, get some pass pressures, this could be a long day for Toledo. Toledo has more talent. Like, they just do. Uh, they're number 67 in college fo- or excuse me, CFB winning edges uh, team strength metric. Ohio is number 88. Like, Toledo should win the game, even with their quarterback out. But, man, they have not played well. I'm, I'm very interested to see what's going to happen here. Um, I don't know how much success either team is going to have. Uh, I do kind of like... The under fifty five here, and which is strange because that that number's been sitting there all week long. Uh, it opened at like sixty and a half. It's been bet down to fifty five, and then it just sat there. It's like nobody wanted to get past that key number, and I can understand it. I would still probably lean the under here because I don't see either offense having a lot of success. Uh, if that's going to be the case, if neither offense is going to have a ton of success, give me Ohio. Like, give me the Bobcats to be able to get this thing done, even without Rourke. A really good success story. Ohio, I mean, it's been forever since they won a MAC title. Uh, never got one under Frank Solich. Uh, this would be great for Tim Albin. I mean, absolutely fantastic for them. And uh, I think this would be awesome for them to... And now, I'll tell you who really needs it, though, is Toledo. Like, they need it. But I, I still believe in Ohio more than I do Toledo because... This Toledo team has just not shown up when they really, really needed to. And if I'm going to trust anybody here, it's probably going to be Ohio. All right, on the other side, we've got TCU, Kansas State, Coastal and Troy, uh, Tulane, UCF, Fresno, and Boise, etc. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back. 
BetUS TV has you covered. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff, only on the BetUS TV College Football Channel. Visit winningcureseverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit betustv.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. All right, right quick, let me go on and tell you First, like the video for us. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. That certainly helps things out. Uh, check out the Valtimeri Surf Company. It is a clothing line or apparel company, I guess you could say, for uh, collegiate towns. It's like a surf company shirt. I've got two of them. It's the Tuscaloosa Surf Company. These guys are fantastic. Go give them a, a clink, clink, a, how about this? How about you click the link in the description? I mean, good gracious. It's been one of those days. Uh, Click the link in the description. Give them a visit. Go and check it out. I'm telling you, you're going to like the designs. The material is absolutely, uh, incredibly comfortable. I mean, just unbelievably comfortable. Uh, So go and check them out. Valtimary Surfco. Use the promo code Gary10. You can get 10% off of your order. Now, let's move along. The Big 12 title game. That's right. TCU, a two and a half point favorite. Total sits at 62 over Kansas State at 12 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC on Saturday. Now, this is a massive, massive matchup. Let's go and pull it up on the screen here. And, well, of course, we have got TCU by 1.79 as far as the number is concerned. And that's just based over the last five weeks, right? Uh, this TCU team is going to be healthier in this game, at least on offense, than they've been in quite some time. Uh, you look at the rushing numbers, it's a little bit surprising. TCU number 103 PPA per rush over the last uh, five weeks, and that's not great. Uh, but Kansas State's defense is really nothing to write home about as far as their rushing defense. Number 62 PPA per rush, number 67 rushing success rate allowed. Um, they're number 65 in offensive line yards. And I don't know. TCU is running the ball like 53% of the time. Mm, you know. I just I don't know uh, that that's really that big of a deal because I think that TCU is going to be uh, pretty healthy here. Like, this is a fired-up spot for them. You look at Kansas State on offense. I think the most surprising thing is that they've not been running the ball. Like, we expected this Kansas State team to be a running team. Well, since Will Howard has taken over at quarterback, they have been an absolute juggernaut passing the football. Number 13 PPA per pass, number 10 passing success rate, and they are number four in passing explosiveness. But you look at that TCU defense, and where is their strength? It is in the secondary. They are number 15 in PPA per pass allowed, number 26 passing success rate allowed, number 28 in passing explosiveness allowed. So they don't let big plays happen all that often. Uh, you look at havoc rate and whatnot, like this is... These two teams do match up pretty well. Um, I'm very curious how this game is going to turn out. Uh, you've got number eight against number five as far as turnover uh, turnover margin is concerned. You've got number 24 versus number 40 as far as penalties per game. Like, this is, uh, this is going to be an all-out war. These are two really, really good football teams. Um, and both teams really good as far as defensive field position is concerned. Like, you've got TCU number six in defensive field position. Uh, Kansas State is number two. But when it comes to offense, it, TCU number 114 in average field position, and uh, Kansas State is number 122 as far as offensive field position. Now, this is over the past five weeks. Uh, it doesn't take into consideration the entire season. At net points per drive, at TCU number 11, uh, Kansas State number 19. Like, there's, there's a lot to like about both of these teams here. I know that the number is a little bit shorter 
Uh, but, I mean, TCU's been finding ways to get this done all season long. I, I would have to ride with the Horned Frogs here. Give me TCU to cover two and a half and go on and, and finish this thing out, win the Big 12, get to the playoff in Sonny Dyke's first year. That's just a massive, massive deal for them. Massive. The Sun Belt Championship game. Coastal Carolina and Troy. Troy is an eight-point favorite. The total sits at 48. This one is a home game for the Troy Trojans. Of course, in John Summerall's first year there, uh, Jamie Chadwell might be uh, coaching somewhere else on Sunday. We'll see what ends up happening with that. But this one, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Let's go on and pull up the stats for you so that you can see what we're working with. Uh, over the past five weeks, uh, Troy would be favored by 10.5 points if you just look at the past five weeks of numbers. Grayson McCall, we still do not know if he is going to play in this weekend's game. Uh, he has not played in three weeks, I believe. Or this is the fourth week of a three- to six-week injury. So, yeah, we'll see. You know, Jamie Chadwell has been kind of kind of quiet about it. Uh, if they have to rely on the backup quarterback guest, uh, that's not going to bode well. I will tell you that. Let's let's look at the Coastal Carolina offense first. PPA per pass over the past five weeks actually pretty good, number 16. But they're number 65 in passing success rate, number 118 in passing rate. Um, they're only throwing the ball 38% of the time, which totally makes sense. The issue there is that Troy's defense is number four in PPA per pass, number four in passing success rate allowed, and uh, they don't allow big plays. They're number 24 in passing explosiveness allowed. If you're going to... If you're going to have a way to take advantage of this Troy defense, it would probably be running the football. Uh, Troy, over the past five weeks, only number 103 in stuff rate. They're number 87 in offensive line yards allowed. Uh, the issue is that Coastal Carolina does not run that Chadwell offense very well with that backup quarterback. They're number 101 in PPA per rush and number 121 in rushing success rate over the past five weeks, even though they run the football 60.45% of the time. It's just something to pay attention to, because that is certainly something that could, you know, if Grayson McCall is back, he runs that offense just to perfection, uh, because one, he's a fantastic passer, but two, um, yeah, you have to worry about the, the deep ball. So you're going to bring guys back. Guys aren't going to be as gap sound as they probably should be against something that is uh, akin to a triple option uh, attack. I, I I looked at this a bunch of different times, and I got bit by the fact that I felt like Coastal would be able to put up points on JMU last week regardless. Now, it was a little bit different situation, and I do trust in Chadwell to be able to scheme guys open, but in this situation, uh, with that number being at 8, like, I like Troy in this spot quite a bit uh, just because of the defense. Like, Troy's defense is something serious. Uh, give me the Trojans. Minus the eight here. Uh, I know that Grayson McCall could come back, but even if he does, I don't believe he's going to be 100%. Uh, he's not been practicing thus far. I, I think that Troy is the significantly better team. John Sumrall getting his team to 11 wins and a conference championship in his first season. Uh, you talk about huge. I mean, that's just a, a big, big deal. All right, moving along to the AAC championship game. And we have got Tulane as a four-point favorite over UCF. The total sits at 57, of course, latest numbers at BetUS. And uh, let's go on and pull up the uh, the numbers on this one. Gus Malzahn's bunch actually won 38-31 when they went to Tulane earlier this season in Yulman Stadium. Well, they got to go back now uh, because they have taken losses uh, in multiple different places in the AAC uh, one to Navy at home. They lost to East Carolina. Um, just just issues, you know. <laughs> uh, Tulane has home field advantage, and their offense has been pretty good here uh, lately. Like, th this, is a, this is a good team. They are number 14 PPA per rush. Of course, Ty J. Spears has been absolutely ridiculous in the month of November. I think he's averaging like eight and a half yards per rush in November. It's like 70 rushes. So it's a huge, huge sample size, and they've been doing that against pretty good competition. Um, but you look at these, uh, you look at these numbers. I've got Tulane by three point eight one, and it just keeps going that direction, right? Because this thing opened at I want to say two, and has moved all the way out to four right now. Uh, and the big reason for that is John Reese Plumley or Rice Plumley, whatever it is, Plumley, the quarterback. Um, he 
pulled up with a hamstring injury last week. Gus Malzahn says he's fine. He's been dealing with that for weeks. But eh, if if he's not good to go, this Tulane team has played teams uh, that have quarterbacks like Mikey Keene, and they've been able to shut them down defensively. Uh, you look at these numbers, both of these over the past five weeks, good offense, not very good defense, right? That's the, the best way to say it. Um, the running attack for Tulane is much more, it's not quarterback-based. The rushing attack for U, uh, UCF is quarterback-based. Um, they are number 22 PPA per rush. Well, that Tulane defense is number 107 in PPA per rush allowed. Uh, UCF's offense, number 25 in rushing success. Tulane's defense, number 85 in rushing success allowed. Well, if Plumlee is not going to play at 100%, you can't really take advantage of that because that is what the Gus Malzahn running game is predicated on. Having a running quarterback that's able to... You're, you're basically putting more people out there than the defense can actually defend. So that becomes a, a bit of an issue. As far as the offense goes for Tulane... I'm not going to say it's pro style because obviously it's not. I mean, Willie Fritz has run the option or at least some version of it uh, basically his entire career. But Spears is absolutely fantastic. They are number 24 in rushing success rate. Well, UCF's defense is number 70 in rush success allowed. Tulane number 14 in PPA per rush. And UCF number 96 in PPA per rush allowed. So you look at stuff rate, Tulane only allowing, uh, or they're number 12 in uh, stuff rate allowed, what UCF is only number 91 in stuff rate. Uh, standard downs PBA, Tulane stays ahead of the chains. They're number 15. UCF is number 104. Like, this is this is a big spot. I think that Tulane is excited that Willie Fritz is going to stay in New Orleans. I think this team is going to go out and get them a championship. Yes, my number is a little bit shorter than what the actual spread is, uh, but give me Tulane. Give me Tulane to cover as a favorite here. I think they are just the better team, and with injury issues on the other side, I think this is a big spot. Like, just a big, big spot for Tulane to be able to get a little bit of revenge for what happened just a few weeks ago uh, in their own stadium when UCF jumped out, scored on four of their first five possessions. I think Tulane gets that revenge, gets the AAC championship. Give me Tulane to cover the four. Next on the board, we've got the Mountain West. Boy, you talk about fun. Fresno State heading to Boise State and the Mountain West Conference Championship game has a line of three in favor of the Broncos here. The total sits at 54. Of course, the latest numbers at BetUS. The total, not excuse me, the total, the time is 4 p.m. Eastern time. And this one's going to be on Fox. Now, I'm going to pull up these stats, but I I want to make something perfectly clear here. Uh, We can look at this Boise State defense all day, right? Number 14, uh, PPA per drive on defense, they you look at what they're able to do as far as uh, uh, the passing game is concerned. Number seven in PPA per pass, uh, number three in passing success rate allowed. And here's here's the issue. Let's go. Let's look at uh, CFB stats. All right, that'll be the best place to do it. All right, CFB stats has. Da, 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 da. We'll pull it up like that. I know this is great radio, and I apologize, but regardless. um, How about this? I'll cut this out of the segment later. (laughs) Uh, I need total offense, and all right, here we go. Here's what they have faced on defense. Utah State, Wyoming, Nevada. They lost to BYU, who is the best quarterback that they faced, and that's my point. Colorado State, Air Force, Fresno, uh, and that was with Logan Fife at quarterback, not Jake Hayner. San Diego State, UTEP, Tennessee Martin, New Mexico, and Oregon State, where they got absolutely throttled um, in the first game of the season. I think, I think that Boise has not faced a team like Fresno with a quarterback like that this year. That's the biggest issue is that they haven't seen anything like this. So while while the numbers over the past five weeks would show that Boise should be favored by about a touchdown, they didn't have to face Hayner the first time. I know that they're going to be at home. I know that Taylor Green is absolutely ridiculous. But you start looking at some of these numbers. Uh, Fresno, number 44 in defensive PPA per drive over the last five weeks. Uh, they're able to stop some of the things that, that Boise does uh, really, really well, right? Um, as far as the running game is concerned, 
Fresno number 25 in rushing success rate allowed. Uh, what I don't like is that rushing explosiveness. Like, this thing could turn sideways quickly um, if they give up big runs to Taylor Green. That's certainly not uh, ideal for sure. But I think that Fresno is going to be able to put up points here. Like, I think that Fresno is uh, absolutely going to score points, and I'm just wondering if Boise State is going to be able to keep up with them. Uh, because we saw BYU just go up and down the field on this defense. I think that might be what we're going to run into again. There's not a stat that can point it out, but that's that's what I'm seeing from this defense. I like Hayner. I like this offense. Uh, give me Fresno, plus the three on the road at Boise State. Uh, I will take Jeff Tedford in this spot. Uh, there, I think that he's got a coaching advantage over Andy Avalos right here. Uh, I like Tedford quite a bit, so give me Fresno, plus the three. All right, on the other side, we got the biggins. We got LSU, Georgia, we got Clemson, North Carolina, and we got Michigan and Purdue. Uh, so check this out and then stick around. Let's check out some things you should know about. Follow the show on Twitter at Winning Cures, and you can follow Gary at Gary WCE. You can also follow on Facebook. Got your own podcast or web show? Looking to start one? Or you're just curious how we look and sound so good? Well, we've got all the gear that we use listed on our gear page on the website. And if you order using our links, you'll be supporting the show too. Subscribe on YouTube to get not only full Winning Cures Everything shows, but individual segments and other goodies as well. We're over 6,000 subscribers, and our goal by the end of the year is 7,500. If you're interested in advertising on a show that reaches over 80,000 unique football fans per month during the season, send an email to Gary at winningcureseverything.com and we'll put together a plan that best fits you or your business. And now, back to the show. LSU and Georgia are playing in the SEC championship game. Uh, that's, a, that's a big spot. That's a big, big spot in Atlanta. And LSU, last week, absolutely laid a dud. That was not good. Not good at all. And, of course, Daniels ends up getting hurt. Uh, he's in a walking boot uh, earlier this week. Brian Kelly said it's precautionary. He did come out today and say that uh, everything looks good. He's going to be playing for us on Saturday. He's had a good week of practice. Okay, we'll, we'll see. If he's limited, that's going to be an issue. And I think that's what's going to end up happening here, but we'll we'll talk about it. Georgia is a 17-and-a-half point favorite. The total sits at 52-and-a-half, and this, of course, is on CBS. It's 4 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. Let's pull up the stats. This is over the last five weeks here. Georgia by 15.18. Uh, you look at the strength of record, LSU number eight over at ESPN, Georgia number two. Uh, you look at team strength, just uh, overall talent on the team, along with experience, et cetera. LSU number six, Georgia number three. Uh, there's ways that Georgia could maybe stay in this game, but this is still a young team. They do have talent, but I still don't know if they really know how to utilize it just yet. Uh, Harold Perkins, zero sacks over the last two weeks. Seems like uh, now that everybody has a little bit of film on him, they are able to game plan around him, and I think that Georgia will be able to take him out of the ballgame. Um, not by injury or anything like that. Let's not get crazy. What I'm talking about is basically they're going to go away from whatever side he's on. Like, it just bottom line. They're, and then they're going to get the ball out quick. I would imagine that Stetson Bennett is going to sit back in the pocket and just let Perkins come after him. So, <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, especially since George has only run, uh, been running the ball like 42.5% of the time over the past five weeks. Uh, they're number 11 in PPA per pass. They are number 83 in PPA per rush, but they are number 60 in rushing success rate on offense. LSU's defense, eh, number 81 rushing success rate allowed. Um, they are number uh, 37 in offensive line yards allowed. Georgia's offense over the past five weeks is number 94 in offensive line yards, number 92 in stuff rate allowed. So maybe there's a way that LSU's defense can absolutely slow this, this thing down. Uh, I don't really trust Georgia to be able to score like a ton of points unless LSU just gives them the ball or gives them short fields, right? That's that's what I'm looking at here. I don't think Georgia is planning on, like, just having a barrage of points the way that they did against Oregon in game number one because this is just a different defense that I don't think is going to allow it. Uh, you look at the plays per game at number 66, number 56. Like, another one of these teams goes fast. There's no reason to. They like to line it up and just bully ball each other, and I, I could understand that. 
Uh, but you start looking at like points per play margin. Georgia's number three. LSU's number 40. Uh, you look at turnover margin. Georgia number 86 and LSU number 74. Like This Georgia team is really good, but there's still some flaws in that game, right? This line is sitting at 17 and a half, and it just it kept growing and growing and growing. And I don't... If if Daniels is healthy, I think that they've got a shot to stay within this number. If he is not, if he is just sitting back in the pocket, I don't trust him enough as a passer. Uh, you look at this LSU offense as far as the numbers go. Number one hundred four PPA per pass on offense over the past five weeks. Uh, they are number, or excuse me, Georgia is number five in PPA per pass allowed. That doesn't. That's not going to go well. Like it's just not. Uh, as far as running the football, like, yeah, LSU's getting Josh Williams back this week, I believe. Um, they're number seven in PPA per rush. They're number 10 in rushing success rate. And, but a, a lot of this is Jaden Daniels being able to run the football. If he can't run the football, if he's got an ankle issue, that's, I mean, he's going to be stuck in the pocket. You're going to rely on those running backs in a very pro style rushing attack. Uh, because I don't see any zone reads, anything like that, from Mike Denbrock. I I think Georgia, just by stopping the run here, is going to be able to run away with this ball game. I, I'm going to go ahead and take Georgia, minus the 17.5, because I don't think that Daniels is going to be healthy. And if they end up having to go to uh, the backup, um, Nussmeyer, that's where you could maybe start seeing like some some turnovers, some things go a little sideways. And and this is one of those spots where Georgia, when they are really dialed in, like they they absolutely suffocate you. I expect this defense uh, to do some big, big things here. Give me give me Georgia, minus the 17 and a half. I know that's a lot of points. Uh, if I trusted that Daniels was healthy, then okay. But uh, this is one of those spots where you're going to have Georgia's full attention and they want that SEC championship. Remember, they did not get it last year. So, it's something to pay attention to for sure. Because uh, they, I mean, they lost to Alabama last year. They want to hold that trophy. That's what they want to do. All right, moving right along. Oh, yeah, Georgia minus 17 and a half. Moving along, Clemson. Clemson is a seven and a half point favorite in the ACC title game against North Carolina. And... The total sits at 64 on this, and it just continues to go up. And the reason it continues to go up is because I, I believe that nobody thinks that uh, any of these defenses can actually get stops. And I don't know that I disagree with them on any of this. Um, we're going to pull up the uh, the stats so that you can see why it would be like that. My issue is that these offenses have been able to find ways to stop themselves here lately. So, let's talk about it. Let's try and figure this out. It's 8 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC. That's when the game is... You look at strength of record. You look at uh, the offensive and defensive numbers. Like, Clemson is number 104 uh, PPA per drive on offense over the past five weeks. North Carolina's defense is number 103. North Carolina's offense number 35 in PPA per drive over the last five weeks. Clemson's defense, number 16. Like, this Clemson offense cannot throw the football, but they can absolutely run it. If they just focus on running the football, I think they would be a lot better and would run away with this thing. But if you look at what they've done over the past five weeks, they're still throwing it 47% of the time, even though they're number 129 in PPA per pass on offense. Like, that is just mind-blowing. When they get behind the chains... They are in a lot of trouble. You get into third and long, second and long even. Passing downs PPA, they're number 122. Uh, well, passing downs PPA on defense for North Carolina, they're number 51. They're not bad. Passing down success rate, they're number 23. That defense shows up when they really, really need to, at least over the last five weeks. They've been uh, significantly better. So that's something to pay attention to on this. Uh, but if they decide, if Clemson decides to run the football, I mean, that this is an issue for North Carolina because they have had uh, some injuries. They've had some just problems uh, with that front seven. They're number 63 in PPA per rush allowed. 
number 73 in rushing success rate allowed. Well, Clemson is number 13 and number 20 in that on offense. You move over to the other side of the ball. Clemson is number 20 in PPA per pass allowed, number 23 in passing success rate allowed. Well, this North Carolina offense has not been great throwing the football uh, over the past five weeks. They're number 65 in PPA per pass on offense, number 17 in passing success rate. But this Clemson team, like they're, they still got dudes on defense. They're going to be able to slow this North Carolina offense down and if you look, based on what North Carolina has done the last two weeks, Georgia Tech had an absolutely fantastic game plan for them. NC State had a fantastic game plan for them. I I have to roll Clemson here. Like, I know that Clemson hasn't exactly given us any real reason to trust them, but as North Carolina, like, I, I don't know that I really want to bet on either one of these teams, but if I am sitting here telling you which direction I would lean if I had to make a pick on the game... It's got to be Clemson. They got to bounce back after last week, I would imagine. You know, you could say that about North Carolina, but North Carolina's a little more used to losing. I know that sounds awful, but give me Clemson here to cover the 7.5. I like Dabo to be able to get another ACC title and to head over to the Orange Bowl. I think they will cover the 7.5 because I expect them to run the ball. Quit trying to throw it with DJU. Just just do it. Just stop. All right, last one on the board here. The Big Ten title game is Michigan and Purdue. That's right, the spoiler makers who are undefeated under Jeff Brom against AP top three ranked teams, which is mind-blowing if you really sit down and look at it. Michigan is a 16-and-a-half point favorite. The total sits at 52. Of course, latest numbers at BetUS. It's 8 p.m. Eastern time on Fox for this one. And we did get news today that Blake Corum is having season-ending knee surgery, which is not great heading into the playoffs, but they do have Donovan Edwards. We will, we will see what happens. Uh, Michigan, over the past five weeks, my numbers would have them favored by 26.38. That is a lot of points. And the reason why is that Purdue's offense has completely fallen apart over the past five weeks. Now, forget all the stuff about AOC not being with the team. Aiden O'Connell, the the quarterback for Purdue. Um, Right, there's there's a family issue that's happening with them. Uh, Obviously, you know, thoughts with those guys, uh, with Aiden O'Connell and his family, and and really with the Purdue football team. But this is a big-time spot for them. What I'm seeing here is... A Purdue defense that has been pretty good and has been able to slow some teams down, what they've not been able to do is stop the run against really anybody. They're number 102 in stuff rate. They are number 69 in offensive line yards allowed. They are number 67 in PPA per rush, number 62 in rushing success rate. I think Michigan is going to be able to get a push in this spot. Right, I think this is a, a big, big spot for them to kind of reestablish the running game. I know they broke some big plays against Ohio State. I don't think they're going to have to break big runs. I think they will eventually. But they're going to be able to lean on Purdue quite a bit here and, and keep the ball away from that offense. Um, they're not going to rely on throwing the football this time. I mean, they, they relied on the big plays against Ohio State for sure. But if you start, uh, if you start leaning on that Purdue defensive line, and then they have to bring up safeties, et cetera, you're going to get a lot of those opportunities again, and J.J. McCarthy showed us that he can absolutely hit them. Uh, this is a big spot. You know, everybody that wants to talk about it, the fact that it's a letdown spot for Michigan, like, what are we talking about? This is the Big Ten title game. They don't get these all the time in Michigan. I, I know they won it last year, but you saw what they did last year. They got their first win over Ohio State in years, in almost a decade and then turned right back around the next week against Iowa, who had an absolutely fantastic defense uh, in an offense that was not nearly as bad as the Iowa def- or offense is this year, and they stomped them 42-3. to I mean, just absolutely whipped them. Uh, I kind of see the same thing happening here. This Michigan team is on a mission right now. Um, and let's look at the Michigan defense, okay, against this Purdue offense. This Purdue offense, number 112 PPA per rush. Well, Michigan's defense is number two. 
Purdue's offense is number 97 in PPA per pass over the past five weeks. Michigan's defense is number 22. Passing success rate, Michigan's defense number 45. Purdue's offense number 126. Like, this is not going well for this Purdue offense. And now they're facing the best defense that they will have faced all season. Like, this this may be the best team that Purdue has faced all season. And it's not like they've been great against uh, the other teams in the Big Ten West. I mean, let's just call it like we see it, okay? Uh, this is... This is a strange, strange spot. A lot of people like Purdue because, oh, they've, you know, they beat two top three ranked teams last year. Well, that Purdue team last year was way better than this year. A lot of that, a lot of that stuff from last season had to do with that defense. And Brad Lambert, who was the defense coordinator last year, has uh, has moved on over. Now, don't get me wrong. This defense, the numbers are looking good over the past five weeks. But this offense is missing something right now. And I'm not sure exactly what it is. Um but they are, they are missing something. I will say that. Uh, Michigan number one in points per play margin over the past five weeks. Purdue is number 80. Uh, net points per drive. Michigan number two over the past five weeks. Purdue number 58. Like this, this is a big time spot for Michigan. I think they're going to get this thing done pretty easily. Uh, give me Michigan to cover the 16 and a half. I, I gave it away on the BetUS show. I'm telling you. Like, I, I feel really good about this Michigan team this weekend, even without Blake Corum. I think this team is just next man up mentality. I like what Harbaugh's doing. Give me Michigan to cover there. Now, let me go on and tell you first about Flow Sports. Um, absolutely fantastic stuff. There's a link in the description. I want you to go and check it out. They've got 25,000 sporting matches over there. Division three football, MMA, like, they are an awesome company to get signed up with. They got free trials. They got all kind of bonuses. Click the link in the description for that. All right. The NFL Super Contest picks. Got to give those out for this week. Been doing pretty good on those. Um, it is week 13 in the NFL. Last week, I went 2-3 and three against the number. My Super Contest picks this week, I've got five of them, of course, every single week. I am 32-27 and 27 thus far on the season. So, uh, we are profitable thus far. We will say that. All right, I, I always read these out. I don't really break them down for you because, I mean, we just went through almost an hour of breakdowns. Uh, I like the Jets plus three at the Vikings this week. Um, I like the Seahawks to cover seven and a half against the Rams. And that's right, the Seahawks are favored by seven and a half at Los Angeles. Uh, I just think the Seahawks team is way better, and this Rams team looks like garbage right now. Dolphins plus four at the 49ers. I like Mike McDaniels. Coming back, it's going to be a good day. Good day for a two and bunch. The Raiders, minus one at home against the Chargers. Uh, that team last week got the W. I, I, I like what the Raiders are doing right now. Uh, and the Chargers team's really falling off. Packers, minus five against the Bears. Yes, I understand it's been a bad year for the Packers. I understand Aaron Rodgers does not look great. But if there's one thing that Aaron Rodgers does, it's beat the Bears. Bottom line. All right, so Jets, Seahawks, Dolphins, Raiders, Packers for this week. I think that's going to wrap it up. Look at that. We got this show done in under an hour. You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for always supporting the show, for following along. Throw your picks in the comments. I want to know who you are rolling with this week. Uh, see if maybe you have found a lean that maybe I would like to roll with this weekend. I would love to see what you've got. All right, so go on and toss those in there. Along with that, make sure that you check out BetUS. Again, it's America's favorite online sports book. BetUS.com. There's a link in the description down there. You get a $50 free play just for signing up. You don't even have to deposit money. It's fantastic. So go and check it out. Of course, BetUS.com. It's, uh, it's where the game begins. That's right. Check out the BetUS College Football Show. I'm going to have the links in the description for that. You can check out Part 1 and Part 2. Find our best bets over there. Uh, you will see exactly which plays I actually uh, am gambling on. That's the ones that I want you to see <laughs> over there. So go ahead and check it out. You also see Kyle and Parker as well. Those guys are incredibly knowledgeable, really, really smart at this stuff, uh, and really fun to talk to about this sport. So it's been a fun year, the regular season. Is, uh, is already over. Now we've got championship week, and then we head into bowl season. And I am excited about it. Uh, we're going to be right back here all December 
doing this thing. So hopefully you guys are prepared for it. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get out of here. Go to winningcureseverything.com, share this show out, tell your friends about it. Of course, if you're not already subscribed, do so, whether it be on podcast or on YouTube. And with that said, let's do this thing. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully, hopefully, all of your tickets cash this weekend. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.